It's just the, the right, you know, it solves the, the problem, the missing 120, 124 powers of 10. That's a, this is a big thing. It ain't, this ain't, there were no coincidences here. This ain't mm -hmm. a coincidence, not a random thing. Right. If you were to try to do it from the past, you would take the area of the past particle horizon, you get the wrong number. It's, too, you know, it's much too big. So you have to take into account the future. Must Notice. be coming from the future. Must be coming from the future. Yeah, because if you do try to do the past particle horizon, you can get the wrong answer. Very off by a big amount. So again, this implies that, that, that our particular universe is in some sense goal-directed. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you can't argue with the facts, man. Drag that out. <laughs> just the facts. I, I dare anyone. I dare Gerard the Hoof, any of these guys, to meet me in person. And we'll discuss this and let everybody watch. Okay, right. let's ju let's just right. let's just let's right. change yeah. the subject a little yeah. bit before we get too deep. But 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 this is but this is extremely important because it's direct evidence. But before we change the subject, okay, it turns out there's a very respectable theory due to John Archibald Wheeler and Richard P. Feynman back in 1940 called the uh, Wheeler Feynman uh, theory of uh, electrodynamics, and which was called the future absorber. They have a thing like our future event horizon, though they didn't know any of that then, and it's exactly what we need. And it, you know, it explains what's called radiation reaction. It actually explains why things, it explains why, why causes seem to be in the past going to the future with the future effects. Uh, we, I call it retrocausality without retrocausality. So it's a very tricky little thing. Hmm. But this is real refinement theory, which was can later you, can you Can you explain that a little bit? Can you, can you give us a picture of that somewhat? Well, what it's, happens it's is, what happens is, okay, mathematical, but... Uh, well, what happens is this. If you look at, say, the emission of light, okay, the emission of light waves when, uh, when charges like electrons, when they accelerate, they cause light to be emitted. Uh, it turns out that their acceleration has to be uh, it has to be non-uniform acceleration. If a uniform accelerating charge won't emit light, but if it but a charge moving in a circle can emit light. Okay, now these light waves can either propagate toward the future, and that's called retarded waves, or they can propagate into the past, and that's called advanced waves, back back backwards in time waves and uh, future waves. So, so are positrons. Well, particles pod, act uh, traveling positrons backwards. are analogous to to electron waves going back going in time. backwards in time. Yeah. Uh, now, but here's the thing. But, but 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 here's the trick. What Feynman and Wheeler showed is that if in the future, what's called the future absorber, if the if the absorber were perfect, if everything in the future got absorbed, then the effect of these backwards waves, these advanced waves coming back from our infinite future, back to the moment of emission of the light itself, it forms what's called a self-consistent loop. They, they kind of cancel out. There's what's called destructive interference. Even though it's there, you don't see it. It's as if, it's as if, there are all, it's as if there's only past causes and future effects. It's, it's as if uh, we, we regain our uh, common sense notion of the arrow of time. Of the arrow of time from this. But they also show that the zero point fluctuation energy that we see now is basically this kind of advanced effect, but it's hidden. It's like hidden under the rug. It's a very tricky little thing. Okay. But now what's happened is uh, the ordinary cosmological model prior to the discovery of dark energy didn't fit the wheel of Feynman picture, the Hoyle, what's called Hoyle and, Hoyle, Hoyle and Nalikar, Sir Fred Hoyle. Uh, they took the wheel of Feynman notion, tried to apply it to cosmology. And it turns out it didn't quite work in what's called the standard Friedman model. But that was before the discovery of dark energy in 1999. Now it does work, because it turns out this future horizon I'm talking about does exactly what Wheel and Feynman needed, because the future horizon is called what's called it's an infinite gravitational redshift surface, the same as the surface of black hole. I won't go into too much detail. But it turns out it fits the bill, just what we, what we need, just what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor wanted. So now the Wheel of Feynman ideas work. And you're able to explain the second law of thermodynamics. You're able to explain why it is that irreversible processes go forward in time and why the direction of aging that we see, the direction of evolution, direction of the emergence of more and more Does this complex... explain the emergence of gravity? Well, that too, and we'll explain that also. But, but before I get to that, it explains the arrow of time, explains irreversibility, it explains why... The thermodynamic arrow of time is aligned directly with the accelerating universe expansion of space. It explains that. 
And by the way, uh, Roger Penrose doesn't have this idea. He, you know, this is a big mystery for him. He, he worries, if you read his book, uh, The Road to Reality, he has objections against inflation theory precisely for these kinds of reasons. But I saw Sir Roger at the meeting in Italy, and at first when I explained the idea, he, you know, he got upset by it. The second time I talked about it, he seemed to sort of begin to see what I'm talking about. But I think uh, eventually, uh, you know, people like Penrose, when they come around to see what this is, they'll, they'll, they'll like it. But it goes against Roger Penrose has a totally different idea now. He has what's called this bead theory, cyclical universe stuff. I think it's I think it's wrong because he doesn't have the idea of retro causality. But we'll see. We'll see who's, who's right. I mean, Roger's a very smart man. We'll see who's right in the end. Uh, is there any way to devise a physical test for retro causality that you can think of? That... Well, already the physical test is the, the, I've just shown that the data, the anomalous redshift data from type 1A supernovae, that that fits this picture. Okay. And nobody else can fit it. And Tamara Davis's thesis also. Tamara Davis's thesis, uh, and then let somebody come up with another. There aren't any. There are not. There aren't any good alternative explanations. Now people have have noticed that that the. So there's lots of disparate data out. I mean, there's lots of disparate theories about what's going on out there right now. Yeah, I mean, but I have like... a very simple calculation that explains the data. Now the thing is this: if they try to explain it from the past particle horizon, they're not going to get the right answer because from Tamara Davis's theory, there's an asymmetry. It turns out. The areas, the areas of the past particle horizon, which is also a spherical shell in our past, so to speak, that we're surrounded. What's called a past light cone has an outer surface that we can kind of see. It's like it's, a, it's like a celestial sphere surrounding us, but it's, it's in our past. That 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 the area of those surfaces is too small to explain what we're seeing. Too it's only the area of our future s surrounding sphere that okay. explains it. So that's the only way to do it. I mean, that's, that's, you know, go Occam's razor. Yeah, otherwise, it's totally crazy. You know, uh, so you have to give up uh, this idea that, that cause and effect only operate from past to present. It also operates from, from, uh, from future to, to present, but in a globally self-consistent way. And there's this guy, Igor Novikov, who's a good friend of Kipton, who's developed a very self-consistent theory of all this. There are no time travel paradoxes or anything. So uh, this, this notion, I call it retro wheel refinement, retro causality with ret without retro causality. Which eliminates the time travel paradox problem. There no, there'd be no time travel paradoxes right. either. You know. But uh, that's a whole other issue. We'll get but the point is, it actually explains that this seems to be the simplest way of explaining the actual data, what we're seeing. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right, just to change subject a little yeah. bit here. Um, let, let's 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 assume let, let's hope and assume that that your paper is, is greeted with uh, acceptance and 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 well there'll be a big battle it's not going to happen yeah of that course easy. of course yeah how would this let, let's get into the idea of extraterrestrial civilizations uh, star faring extraterrestrial civilizations would this be applicable to that type of, yes, of advanced most technology most definitely in fact my book the book I'm working on now Stargate called the Sarfati Lectures in Dark Energy Warp Drive, okay? Uh, absolutely applicable. The trick is, though, how do we control this dark energy tends to spread out over huge cosmological scales. We have to, like, control it over a couple of meters in the lab. How do we do that? that right. That's the big issue. Have you gotten um, any ideas? On I have some vague, I have some general ideas. There's, they're there's just a, in gestation. Yeah, they're phase. in gestation. Now, it turns out there's some interesting work. Uh, there's Ray Chow, who's a very, uh, who's both a theoretical physicist from Berkeley and uh, and also experimental physicist. I worked with Charles Towns. He's uh, he's kind of, I'd say, uh, Ray Chow is kind of the Enrico Fermi of uh, today because uh, very few physicists can do both good theory and also real experiments. He's Apparently, working on the gravity gravity wave detectors. It's called the gravity gravity. Using what's called gravity radio, uh, in which. Uh, uh, using superconduct thin films of superconductors, you can amplify. You, you can amplify. These are carbon carbon nanotube superconductors. 